There's something about lost media that piques our interest. Maybe for you, it's the mystery behind it, finding importance in preserving media, or a simple curiosity. It could even be a faint memory of seeing it with your own eyes before it was lost and longing to see it again. Especially if it was during childhood, as I think nostalgia can play a big part in the appeal of it. It's fundamental to keep the lost media community fresh and to give the lesser known examples some limelight. There's an ample amount of posts on r slash lost media that either go completely unnoticed or the attention to them fizzles out quickly. Today we are going to be exploring that subreddit. We'll dive into some intriguing, bizarre, and perhaps even disturbing pieces of lost media. Let's get right into it. James the Cat episodes are hard to find online, the show was considered lost media as this was not released on DVD or on streaming services. Some episodes dubbed in Russian are found and resurfaced online. Some more episodes for the 1998 Series 2 revival are lost too. James the Cat was a children's show starting in 1984. The general aesthetic of it is absolutely adorable and I actually watched reruns of the show as a child on PBS Sprout centered around an obese house cat accustomed to a life of indoor leisure and luxury. His wealthy owners move to a new house and accidentally leave him behind. He takes up residence in the vast garden where he befriends the wild animals who live there. It was later revived in 1998 as a second series for Milkshake, a British television program, and aired on Sprout in 2005 through 2006. My aunt literally handmade a James the Cat plush for me when I was a toddler, so it was great to come across this post and have lost media that I watched when I was little. User Kravinax asked if Opie had a list of the found episodes, but I don't believe there is a definite list. All we know is there were a total of 52 episodes. While no DVD release or complete archive exists, there were two VHS tapes released by Tempo Video in 1987 and one released by Screen Entertainment in 1988, featuring 26 episodes in total between the three. This leaves us with exactly half of the series found if we could track down each tape. The only one documented as of today is the 1988 release James the Cat Neighbors, thanks to user Epiternal. The other two tapes are currently nowhere to be found, but I did find proof that one copy each sold on eBay at some point. It's a matter of waiting, I think they are bound to turn up at some point and I'd consider these partially lost. It still leaves us with 26 remaining episodes though, as the videos I found posted on YouTube are the ones from the VHS tapes. The show, surprisingly, doesn't even have its own lost media wiki article, but it without a doubt deserves one. I sincerely hope the search for James the Cat can garner more attention. It is such a pleasant childhood memory of mine and I'd love to revisit it. May more episodes eventually be found. The sample from the final five minutes of Everywhere at the End of Time is from a record Leyland got from a record store. There is no more information on this I can find. The name of the record is unknown and Kirby won't say. While basically the opposite of Obscure itself, I rarely see any coverage of this lost sample despite its extensive search. Everywhere at the End of Time is a series of six studio albums by The Caretaker or Leyland Kirby that portrays the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Each album was released over six month periods to give a sense of time passing. I'm sure you've heard It's Just a Burning Memory, I'm probably playing it in the background right now. It's become a staple in liminal space videos and it's a hauntingly beautiful piece. The albums gained major traction and I'd say 2020. Each track consists of sampled ballroom music that degrades as the six hour long album goes on, with the original sample of the final five minutes being lost to this day. This user commented, adding some very useful information on the sample. We know it was made in the 1960s and only 50 copies of the record are known to exist. One for each member of the church choir who performed the song. Leyland Kirby acquired two copies sometime during the 90s while living in the UK. The main reason Kirby won't say what the sample is isn't due to simply refusing, but because he genuinely doesn't remember the name. The record was also a white label, which usually contained no info on records themselves. People at one point thought it could be Lord Let Me Know Mine End by Maurice Green, but unfortunately it was confirmed to not be. 
Another promising lead was this song that I can't pronounce, and it was starting to look like this was it. This was a sample, it was gonna be found, and the search was gonna be put to rest. And Kirby himself commented on the YouTube upload with the disappointing confirmation that while close and a good find is 100% not the sample used. This is an ongoing search, and I'd like to be confident that the exact sample will resurface. Or at least I hope it can be. I think it's a very significant piece of lost media that is deserving of being found. Osama Bin Laden's Animal Crossing save. We know that Osama Bin Laden played Wild World on an emulator. That being said, the FBI hasn't released his town. Is there a chance they still have it? And if so, would it be possible to like FOIA request it and get the save running to explore? Out of all things I expected to read with my pair of eyes today, this was not one of them. This is such an odd and unsettling example of lost media, but it honestly is interesting because it isn't the blatantly disturbing lost footage of someone's death, for example, that a lot of us are used to hearing about. So I think the juxtaposition of Osama and Animal Crossing just feels very strange. Also, I find it amusing that it's implied the FBI would just release his town as if it were common practice. OP added an update to wrap up findings, saying, This link seems to be our target, but the contents are all stuck in a 300 gigabyte zip file downloaded with no working way to browse contents of it individually. There is a list button that claims to allow such, but the page returns an error. The game may be redacted from the dump for copyright reasons, but I won't know for sure until someone downloads everything.zip and extracts it to dig around. I gave the purported list of redacted items on the page a control F and found nothing pertaining to Anim. They then went on to add a second update. I'm having my doubts. Downloading the zip bomb might be redundant. It seems weird that the SAV files for other DS games are there in what I assume is working condition, but the only pointers to Animal Crossing are too tiny to function. I can't help but fantasize that this is some sort of cover-up. The better way to access it seems to be the official CIA.gov page, not the Internet Archive post. Regardless, it only further confirms what has already been suggested. Something still feels weird about this whole thing. Wild World has no file extension and basically no data. Must have been an error or copyright, or maybe they just really don't want the public to see it, and maybe, just maybe, the zip bomb will have it even though there is barely any evidence of such. This user pointed out how they seriously doubt they threw away a shred of data collected from him, but that they also seriously doubt they'd ever release it, even under FOIA. I always imagined him hiding out in a cave. Picturing him hanging out in a badabad playing games on an emulator is strange. While I admit a part of the morbid curiosity to see it is there, this is a perplexing piece of unreleased media that I am doubtful we will ever see. The Paz Show Puppet Segments if you were a young child in the 2000s like me, you probably remember a block on TLC slash Discovery Kids called Ready, Set, Learn. The block aired shows like Bigfoot Presents, Meteor, and the Mighty Monster Trucks, The Magic School Bus, and Wilbur. The mascot in this post-subject was Paz, a five-year-old penguin puppeteered and voiced by Tim Legeese. He would announce the shows in bumpers. There was also his show, The Paz Show. The past show was 8 minutes long and would air in between shows because, like most preschool blocks, Ready, Set, Learn didn't air ads. At the beginning and end of each episode, there were puppet segments with Paz and his mom, Big Penguin, who was played in a full-body costume similar to Big Bird. These segments were somewhat linked to the animated parts, which Paz told as a story and made up the bulk of the episode. Only the animated segments were aired internationally, with all Ready, Set, Learn references removed. Throughout 2015 and 2016, all the animated segments were uploaded by a seemingly official channel known simply as The Past Show, using English audio and German footage. So now I'm looking for the puppet segments. Three full episodes had already been found, so I just had to wait. On January 4th, 2017, a YouTube channel under the name SFSVHS uploaded their oldest surviving DVD on the 10th anniversary of recording it. It contained three full episodes, boosting the found full episodes to six out of 80. Then on March 9th, 2017, they uploaded the final Ready, Set, Learn broadcast from October 8th, 2010, containing another five. However, one of them had already been found. This gave us 10 full episodes, so we're one-eighth there. 
The first puppet segment of Sick in Bed has been uploaded, but the ending puppet segment is still missing. I bought a promotional DVD off eBay with eight full episodes, seven not available on YouTube. I have had the DVD for a couple years now, but I still need to upload it. There's also a few other DVDs available on both eBay and Amazon that contains an assorted mix of Ready, Set, Learn shows, including Paz. Here we have another show from my childhood. Funnily enough, I remember way more of these puppet segments than the animated bits. I have a very specific memory of a puppet segment where Paz and his mom are talking about patting their heads and rubbing their bellies at the same time. This user added that they have a sealed DVD that came with a finger puppet and said Ready, Set, Learn on it. They said they'd upload a picture of the finger puppet, but now they're deleted, so I'm assuming this is a dead end. Paz has its own Lost Media Wiki article detailing every episode title in which our Lost Verse is found. In this entry, we are thankfully finally met with great news, and there was an immense finding on June 23rd, 2022. YouTube user Kira TV uploaded 75 out of 80 of the full episodes of the Paz show, all including the puppet segments. All episodes were downloaded from Discovery Education, a site used by teachers and students. So I guess it was literally just sitting on Discovery Education. However, there are still four lost episodes that remain, the titles being One's Company, Things Change, Sandcastle to the Sky, and Big Shoes. Considering we have already had such great process in recovering the lost fragments of the past show, I think the last four lost episodes are nearly guaranteed to re-emerge sometime in the future. Anyone help me find info on this song? Helping a brother of metal. User Black Project 51 linked a YouTube video titled Who Was This Mystery 1980s Power Metal Band? <laughs> The channel that posted it has a detailed description going over the story behind the song that has now been given the placeholder title, The Fallen King, and what they've known so far. In late 2020, a listener to Ian Christie's Roots Metal History show on Sirius XM Liquid Metal submitted a cassette of a song taped to the radio in 1987 and asked for help identifying the band. What started out as a simple song ID soon developed into a full-on mystery as none of the usual metal druids and gurus around the world seemed to know the answer. Who is this band? Here's what we know. This song was taped from the nationally syndicated Z-Rock in 1987. Various DJs from that time have been contacted but haven't been able to ID the track. The DJ was probably Pat Dozzi, who hasn't been located yet. A different person attempted to ID the song on Metal Archives forum in 2009. This person has now surfaced as of March 2021. They also taped this song from the radio in 1987, possibly from Bill Peters' Metal on Metal radio show on WJCU Cleveland. Bill Peters has been contacted without reply yet. This person's recording of the song sounds slightly cleaner. A huge number of bands have been rolled out. Some for obvious reasons, others after a lot of footwork. There are lots of clues here in the high quality of the original recording, the fact that the singer seems to be a native English speaker, the musical way the song is put together. But so far, those are just clues that haven't led to anything concrete. This sounds strongly like mid-80s Texas or California power metal, but neither of those avenues has proven fruitful. Maybe the answer is in UK metal or even the Christian metal underground. Who shall crack the scrolls and release the glory due until these valiant metal warriors? I was immediately invested in this unidentified song. Not only because Lost Wave is one of my favorite Lost Media subcategories, but because I love metal music. I'd say alternative metal and melodic death metal are probably my all-time favorite genres. 
There are some more posts regarding the Fallen King on r slash Lost Wave, but it has yet to be identified. Tons of lost songs are identified as time goes on, even if the lost ones make it seem a bit discouraging. I'd like to believe we can still find the band that created the song, and I think if it does happen, the Fallen King will become one of the core found songs within the Lost Wave community. Trying to find evidence of this extremely obscure McDonald's product. Remember attempting to order at the same time that Fish McBites were available. There is seemingly no evidence of them ever existing online. You've heard of all different types of lost media, but have you heard about lost fast food? User Street Lander recalls McDonald's releasing shrimp McBites, but couldn't find any proof of their existence, so turn to r slash lost media for help. Additional information. The photo in the post is a mock-up of how I remember the packaging and advertisement of shrimp McBites. I attempted to order this product once and was unable to and instead had them substituted for fish McBites. This distinct interaction with the McDonald's is the reason why I am sure I am not mistaking this for a foreign release or another product. I saw the advertisement outside the McDonald's, attempted to order it, and failed. If I had received the product, perhaps I wouldn't be as upset at the lack of imagery of it now. The product was available at the same time Fish McBites were available as part of the push of seafood for Lent. This was in 2013. Fish McBites are heavily documented, but Shrimp McBites are never mentioned anywhere. Perhaps this was an extremely narrow failed test market? Something else? My immediate family also remembers Shrimp McBites. Previously, I was also able to find a single forum post in a single thread also mentioning Shrimp McBites, but this has since been lost too. Yoda's Chick of Stick commented, does lost food even count as lost media? While the food itself isn't important, I care more about the fact that no advertising slash marketing materials for the product exist. This is very usual for a place like McDonald's. We have recordings and images of McDonald's products from the 80s and 90s, yet we don't have anything for this comparably recent product. OP also confirmed they weren't just misremembering the whole fried shrimps available in Pakistan and other countries. This user who worked at McDonald's during the time of Fish McBites doesn't recall the Shrimp McBites, but says how it could have been regional since some McDonald's have McLobster. While there were some helpful suggestions like so and other vague memories, we were still left with no proof that McDonald's ever created a Shrimp McBite. Until user Moss Covered Rocks commented, Ooh, weird. If you search Shrimp McBites on Twitter, you can see people talking about them in 2013, but I can't find anything else. This is real, thank you. This clearly shows dozens of people talking about this product I remember. While not verified proof, this at least showed that if OP was misremembering, multiple people across the internet were too at the exact same time frame. Not impossible, but it gave us hope. Then Brendan2000 emailed McDonald's inquiring about the shrimp McBites and got a response. Hello, Brendan. Thank you for taking the time to contact McDonald's about our Shrimp McBites, March 25th to April 29th, 2013. Shrimp McBites were breaded whole shrimp with a crispy outer coating and a mild salt and pepper flavor, served with a cocktail sauce in a container designed for easy handling on the go. They were available in three sizes, snack, regular, or shareable, at these three store locations. 300 East Roosevelt Road, Lombard, Illinois. 2175 West Roosevelt Road, Wheaton, Illinois. 2030 South Naperville Road, Wheaton, Illinois. I hope this information is helpful. Again, thank you for contacting McDonald's about our shrimp big bites. We hope to have the opportunity of serving you again soon under the Golden Arches. This is big. They are real. This shows they are 100% real. Now the next step is finding an actual promotional image of them. We are so close. Finding an image is going to be extremely difficult considering it's an eight-year-old product that existed at a whopping three locations for barely over a month. Talk about limited availability. When I did message and ask, I also said to attach any pictures of the item or any promotional slash advertising for it, but she didn't include any. I would assume that means there isn't one for the item. It has been over a year now since Streetlander's original post. They are still just as interested in trying to find physical proof of the product, whether it be marketing or something as simple as finding a photo that a customer might have taken of their shrimp McBites. OP did make an update post a little less than a year ago, ending the rundown of the findings and proof we do have with, McDonald's products have left the lost media community stumped many times before. 
The Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald VHS, McDonald's DS. Despite those suffering from issues such as geographic separation, language barriers, and the scarcity of limited release physical media, they were both eventually found after extensive effort. The fact that this product was available in only three locations for barely over a month, with not a single personal account of anyone ever actually trying it, and not a single photograph of the product or any associated media related to its advertising, lends me to believe that this very well may be one of the rarest, if not the rarest, product that McDonald's had ever released. I would be lying if this mystery didn't drive me at least a little bit crazy. I was so close yet so far from actually trying these and always felt insane when no one had ever heard of them. I can only be at peace if someone were to manage to find an actual image of this product I remember seeing almost a decade ago. And as of today, we still have yet to find any photos or advertisements. Maybe none exists at all and it's nothing more than a dead end search. But while a little humorous, I can't help but feel similar to OP. I always get a special kick out of these trivial types of mysteries, and I'd love to see photographic evidence of shrimp McBites before my own eyes. While obviously the concept has existed way before the internet became what it is today, lost media has become a significant part of internet culture. The internet simultaneously made it easier than ever to recover lost media while adding to the total amount of lost media cases resulting in it being more difficult. With deleted YouTube videos like The Big Star Secret or the fact that anyone can bring anything to attention. Before the internet, I don't think shrimp McBites would be considered lost media and we probably wouldn't know about them, for example. It's so rewarding to solve or find a case and exciting to search for or just dwell on the mystery. Whether it's found or not is still incredibly fascinating and it's absurd just how much is out there. I'm only trying to bring more attention to some that I think genuinely deserve it. I hope you enjoyed this video, it was truly enjoyable to compile some of my favorite cases of lost media to share with you all. In the future we may be lucky enough to say that these are not lost anymore or they may stay in the lost media abyss forever. Either way, thank you.